Hey, what's going on my friends and welcome to this video where I'm going to share with you a new 5D client attraction strategy. This is a way to, in a sense, have a certain focus, a rearrangement of your inner world that will translate into not just attracting more clients because that's not always a good thing if they're not the right type of clients, but attracting the people, your dream customers, your dream clients, the people that will pay you what you're worth, the people that will really benefit from your services and really get a lot of value out of it and the people that will appreciate your time. I know we've all had clients like that where it just, when you have that type of person that just appreciates you and, and you can see it's, they're being very much helped by you and there's that real resonance, it may, in those moments you realize like you have the best job in the world. Like there, there's nothing like it. But the reality is a lot of times the folks we attract are not like that. And this is going to be, I'm going to share with you several things from my own experience of, you know, being a practitioner of sorts since I was, you know, 21 years old. I'm 37 now as a trainer, as a coach and all these different things I've done. Um, I've learned some things that are going to help you attract not just more. You will attract more clients, but you'll also attract the right kind of clients, the clients that make you love your job. And what you'll find, the whole premise for this, even like, you know, me and Aaron, my business partner, part of this channel, we study a lot of like just purely entrepreneur types of, uh, you know, coaches and motivators and instructors. And even these folks that we, that we learn from that aren't always necessarily like into 5D and spirituality and things of that nature, they understand, even them, they understand that your business is literally a reflection of you, your inner reality, your inner world. And you cannot change this outer reflection if you don't, if you're not in alignment within yourself. So some of these things I'm going to share with you are going to be more addressing you as the practitioner, but will result in a very different reflection, very different clients you attract into your life. Number one is to charge what you're worth. So many people I see are way, way, way undercharging and they tell themselves because they want to help everybody. And on some level, I know that's true. But on a deeper level, in my opinion, it's because they don't believe they deserve to charge more. And how do I know that? That was me. That was me. I used to charge very little for all my services. And I told myself, well, you're just a nice guy, Victor. And what I found is that when I, when I undercharged, what I would attract are people who are like kind of like high maintenance clients, high maintenance clients that are very demanding, very unappreciative. And even though I gave them a killer deal, they're unsatisfied and they're, they're bitter about it a lot of the times. Once in a great while, uh, there'd be that person that was like, man, it's a good value. Thank you, Victor. You should probably be charging more. Most of the time, it's not. When you, you charge a very inexpensive price, you're going to get cheap, needy customers 90 or so percent of the time for, for most people. Now, when you actually charge what you're worth, you attract a different type of person. The types of people that you would love to work with, they oftentimes will choose not to go with you because you're charging so little. If I... For me, as like a spiritual person, I've had Reiki, I've had certain things done that I was not satisfied with. I'm not quick to let anybody sort of uh, pierce into my energy and, and heal me and that kind of thing. I'm very, very selective with that. And if I see some person charge like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks, I'm gonna not go to that person because they're charging so little, because I'm not going to trust them. I'm going to associate that very low ticket, not with a uh, you know, noble generosity. I'm going to associate it with someone who's not experienced, who's not very much in a high demand. So there are like the higher paying customers that are not going to go with you because you're charging too little. And I've told this story before, but there was a time a long time ago when I wasn't even doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. And as a gift to my audience, my email newsletter list, I gave away two free sessions with me. And everybody was all excited, you know, and the two people who won, when I, when I scheduled this free call, um, both of them didn't even show up. They, we had it scheduled, they just no-showed it because they didn't value it. They didn't value it 
And therefore, they didn't put any energy into it whatsoever because they didn't pay anything. On the other token, me and my friend Aaron, we would hire this one guy named Chris Harder, and he charges $5,000 for a two-hour session. Mad five grand for two hours. Do you think we were late? Do you think we were like, no, we showed up with freaking a notebook ready to take notes. We recorded it. We were like, we had our, we brainstormed for days of things you wanted to ask this person. We got a lot out of it. We got our, we got our money's worth. It was helpful big time. But if he charged me 20 bucks or whatever, hundred bucks, I would have, I would have just looked at it like one other little thing within my schedule and not really put much energy into it. But because I paid a lot, I got a lot out of it. And you're going to find that too. If you want those clients that are really going to take your thing seriously, the more they invest, the more they're going to think like, I need to take it seriously. I've spent all that money. It'd be silly not to. So I'm going to, I'm going to push myself maybe when I don't want to, to show up and get the most out of it. Another important sort of related, but not oftentimes sort of seen variable here. When you charge what you're worth, obviously you will make a lot more money. And when you make a lot more money, you're going to be a lot more relaxed in your business. If you're, if you're in that sort of fight or flight, desperate, sort of needy, I got to, got to make some money. I got to hope these people sign up. If you have that, it's like, it's like two opposite poles of a magnet. You're, you're repelling people. That's like people can smell neediness from the fricking phone and it's not attractive. It's, you can't trust that. But if you're charging more money, you're happier, you're getting better clients, you're making more money, then everything you do is more like because you want to do it, not because you need to do it. And then it's just going to, it's going to be like you're going to effortlessly make even more money and you're, everything's going to grow and it's because you're not in that fight or flight mindset anymore because you're finally charging what you're worth. Number two is to set expectations right away. And this, this stemmed from me, me and Aaron had this coaching program, the full-time purpose of one of the clients was saying that she was a coach and she was doing sessions and what she's finding is that people are going over their time. And she put up with it for a little while because she didn't have that many clients and she didn't want to like upset them. But now that she's getting busier, she's getting to where it's like, wow, these people now, they're, like, they're used to going 20 minutes over the time limit. And she's like, how do I, how do I stop doing that? And I told her, I said, well, you, you kind of, it's hard. It's harder to do that when you've allowed people to, to get away with something for a long time. And it's not their fault. It's our fault as a practitioner for not just explaining here are the expectations. You know, when I used to sign up a coaching client, I used to uh, have this email that would just share a few things. And one of the things I would share is like, if you really need to get a hold of me, you can, but please be mindful of my time and keep it very short and to the point because I have a lot of clients. And if it can absolutely, if it can't wait, do it. But if it can, let's just talk about it on the call. Something like that. Something sort of polite, but I established a boundary. And the reason I did that is because I made the mistake of not doing that. And I, I made myself available, whatever, because I only had like two clients and I thought I wanted to like hook them up as much as possible. But as I grew, I had more clients and then you'd have like a percentage, a small percentage of people will completely abuse what will, will like are like takers. And I had people essentially emailing me these long novels in like all cap locks, no paragraph indentations whatsoever. And at the end of reading them, I didn't even know what the hell they were talking about. I, I couldn't, it was like they were just spewing their drama at me every freaking day. And I would, I would be annoyed at them. How dare they? No, no, no. It was a lesson to me. Don't allow it. But the problem is when you allow it for a while and then you say, hey, by the way, you got to stop fucking annoying me every day with your email drama. You don't say it like that. But then they're, then they're offended. Then they're like, whoa, that's not fair. You got to set these expectations right away. When you do it from the get go, it, there's no resistance from them. There's resistance when you wait. And this goes to show, I've, I've also seen this with healers, psychics, people who are like in the middle of a good reading, you know, and they're, they're asking question after question, the time's up and you're like, okay, I'll answer this one more question. And then it turned out to be a long one and you got your clients out there waiting or you just, you got somewhere to be. No, you just got to be firm and, and set the, the expectations right away and then there's no issues. Number three is become the client you want to attract. Are you a client? I would ask you. 
Do you have healers, psychics, coaches, whatever you are, do you have one? You absolutely should. You should do it if for no other reason because it will give you a certain level of like entitlement, a healthy entitlement to where like you will know I'm investing in myself and therefore you should too kind of thing. But if you don't invest in yourself, how can you expect your clients to invest in you? It doesn't work that way. The, the more successful you become, the more coaches you should have. You know, I have a, a, like a psychologist, this guy named Doug, he's like a shadow work coach. I have a very expensive business coach. Me and Aaron spent like $60,000 for a year with this, this, this like mastermind. We, and, and we go to like different events and stuff. We've gone to Tony Robbins, 5, 10K a pop. You know, we've invested, invested, invested. And it's, it's, it's worth it on an educational level. When you invest in yourself, it's like, it's like it does accelerate things for you, big time. I wouldn't be where I'm at if I just did it all on my own. That's just kind of an arrogant way to go about things because especially starting a business, there's so much to learn and there's, it's just so wise to learn from people who have done what you've done and can share it with you to help you avoid the pitfalls. But something I didn't foresee happening but has made a dramatic impact is when I invest, started investing in myself, I raised my prices. I started expecting people to sign up. In my mind, it's like, why wouldn't you sign up? This is going to help you. I know it will because I know how much I've been helped from other helpers, other coaches, other, you know, whatever. So when you become the client you want to attract, it makes a big difference. Also, when you are a client, do the work. Go through the program. Actually take action. Make yourself do it. Because I've had a lot of clients that would buy courses and stuff and they wouldn't do it. They would just sort of like buy it and they wouldn't really get the result that I knew was inherent in that program and I was like that. I was the same way. I'd buy all this stuff and I would really just never go through it. But now that me and Aaron, we invested in this as an example, this one expensive course, I'm, I'm listening to that thing every day in my car. It's, I'm just feeding my mind with this content and it, it's, it's making a big difference. So also do the work. Also, I recommend be like a, a cool customer. Don't be that person who's always like defaulting on their credit card payment or, or, or want having all these like annoying requests. You be cool, be respectful, be appreciative of your coach or healer or whatever because if you're not, you're bound to attract people that drive you bananas. So don't be that guy, don't be that gal, okay? Be the client you want to attract. Number four, I'll explain. It says, it says learn from the, the wild cards. Wild card is not an official term. It's a term that me and my team have, have labeled when we would run retreats. Sometimes you would get a personality, you could say a character that we would call a wild card. Someone that was just really hard to work with. Someone that was just almost like you got to constantly keep an eye on and hope they're not going to be disruptive. They're unpredictable. Um, and as a, as a coach, you're going to run into people like that. And in the beginning, when I, I would run into these kind of folks when I was a coach and I would complain about them. I'd say, man, this person is so difficult to work with. And I, I'd go to bed ruminating. I'd be frustrated and I would blame them. And what I learned is that these people, I believe, just like any challenge that comes into our life, I believe they're there to elevate us, to help us learn and help us grow. And you can learn a lot from the really pain in the ass clients. And sometimes the lesson is, why are you taking them in the first place? But sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's like, hmm, I really have to think outside the box here. I really have to push myself and get creative here because I'm not going to give up on this person. I'm going to try, they need my help. I can help them, but how? I don't know. And then you, you stretch, you, you grow. So it's like, it's, they can teach you so many valuable, just invaluable lessons from these challenging personalities that'll, you know, they'll find themselves on your table, find themselves on, on the other end of the phone line, at your retreats, whatever it is. You got to learn from them. You got to own it. You got to understand that you want to buy into the law of attraction. Well, guess what? These challenging personalities, you attracted. So the question is, why? Why did you attract them? And if you can take responsibility for that and ask that question, you'll find out why. And there's a lot of just beautiful lessons you can learn from these challenging sort of archetypes that find their way into your life and into your business. And number five, seeking to understand. This is a, this is a huge one that I see a lot of people doing the opposite. 
And this actually comes from a quote out of uh, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. In one of his chapters, it says, seek to understand, not be understood. Most people, they want to be understood. They say, I'm looking around the world. I have this passion. I want to do this. Let me find, let me like sort of impose it on people. And you can justify that because you're like, you look around and say, okay, these people need this. I know what they need. And then, then like your whole business, your whole offer is predicated on the foundation of you wanting to be understood, you wanting to be fulfilled. And it oftentimes does not work. Even if you're right. A lot of times you are right. You say, man, these people I work with, they could, they could use meditation. Man, if these, if these people did Tai Chi, it would transform their life. But the problem is, if they're not asking for it, they're not going to want it. They're going to resist it. The same way you would resist something being pushed on you. So you want to do it. You want to seek to understand. You want to observe and really understand what, not only what do these people need, your customers, your clients, but what, are they, what do they want? What are they asking for? What problems do they have that they want help with? That's where you slip in your business. That's where your business is it's a solution for the demand in the marketplace. But also just having the mindset of like observing people and not making it about you. And this could, this could even translate into like making content online. A lot of people make content because they always want to share. And that's fine. And I think you should. But what you also want to do is observe how are people taking this in? Because I, I say a lot of things, you know, but certain things I'll say, I'll notice, wow, that thing really had an impact on a good, good, a good amount of people. There must be a need there. They must be struggling with that. And so I tailor my, I could talk about a lot of things, I tailor what I say on that particular day to what I think people need the most. And that's just kind of, sort of a mindset of being, taking the time to get to know your customer. In fact, this, this guy me and Aaron learned from, Sam Ovens, he makes, you know, he had his business going where he was making like 18, 20 million dollars a year. He's extraordinarily successful and it really lives what he teaches. And what he would do, even at that level, he said he would meet, I think like three to five of his customers for free every week. Maybe not that amount, but something really surprising, some kind of figure like that. And he would just talk to them and get to know them and ask them questions. He was seeking to understand even when he's making the big bucks because he knows that translates into everything else. So really just having that mindset of asking yourself, and what I, is what I'm doing for me or is what I'm doing genuinely to help other people? You could even take what I'm doing here in this video as a case in point to that. Like what I like to do a lot is, is help people with much more of the advanced type of stuff. And I could do that. I could share with you a lot of very like, you know, ninja type of stuff that me and Aaron know that we do actually teach in our full-time purpose coaching program. Um, but I know a lot of the people watching that, it would, it would, they're not quite ready for that. It's, it'd be kind of over their head, even though I like to talk about it, even though I know that one day they're going to need this information. I, I've learned because me and Aaron have done a lot of different things to really get to know you guys. I know where you're at, most of you, of course, it's the general. I know where most of you are at. A lot of you are either new in your business or, or wanting to start a business. So things like this is gonna resonate with a lot more of you than if I talked about like this advanced Facebook funnel and epic, you know, epic like SEO strategy or you know, different things like that. So it's about doing that. And now I, I, I'm arming you with where you are at now knowing that if I can get you to understand this stuff and to start growing and making money, then you'll maybe, then you'll maybe, I, I can maybe eventually evolve this channel and start sharing more advanced stuff. But I can't just ignore where you're at now. And this I see a lot of times with like, especially in the spiritual community. There's people that start to wake up and they look around their friends and family and say, these people need this. And they're trying to share with them things that they, uh, these folks are just not ready for. You need to really understand where they're at, give them what they need for where they're at, and help them make those incremental imp sort of uh, you know, graduations. You gotta be really mindful about that the whole time. So, and what that'll do in relation to this, it'll put you, it'll really like create that link 
where you're doing something that's perceived as very valuable, there's a market for it, and it allows you to charge what you're worth, it allows you to set these expectations and have no issues, it allows all these things to come into balance, that foundation of seeking to understand and not just be understood. Good luck, my friends. Hope you enjoyed. Have an amazing day. Peace.